Now at four minutes past ten, the news with Trevor MacDonald and Alistair Stewart. Major says pick Kinnock or me, but Tories stay behind in polls. Kinnock says Conservatives don't deserve re-election. Ashdown attacks the Tories again over PR. The people of Ireland will get a new vote on abortion. Brightness the Whale goes home to captivity. Good evening. With only 33 hours to go now before the election, the party leaders have been pitching tonight for the uncommitted votes which could decide it. In his last big speech of the campaign, Mr Major asked voters to put their trust in him on Thursday. He said he'd only just begun the tasks he'd set himself. Mr Kinnock said the Tories didn't deserve to be re-elected. If a plumber failed three times to fix a leak, he said, you don't call the same man back again for a fourth try. The Liberal Democrat leader, Mr Ashdown, said the Conservatives were playing a desperate and dangerous game in their opposition to electoral reform. News at 10's Survey 92 by Harris suggests Labour are now two points ahead of the Conservatives. Last week it was six. Tonight's Harris News at 10 figures, Labour 40, down one and last week. Conservatives 38, up three. Liberal Democrats 18, down one. A Maury poll for ITV's first Tuesday program tonight suggested Labour 40%, Conservatives 37, Liberal Democrats 20. The News at 10 poll of polls, a rolling average of the most recent eight polls, now suggests Labour 40, up a point since yesterday, Conservatives 37, no change there, Liberal Democrats 19, that's down one. A Labour lead of three points. The Labour leader, Mr Kinnock, said the future of the National Health Service rested on the general election. He also called the Conservatives the architects of recession and said they had no new policies. Mr Ashdown said the Conservatives, contemplating defeat on Thursday, wanted to divide and polarise opinion. Mr Major said the Conservatives had given Britain 13 of the finest years in history, in which private wealth and public welfare had grown together. Our com campaign correspondents report. At this final rally, this last effort to turn the tables, no public sign of private Conservative uncertainty about the result. Are you in good heart? Yes! I can't hear you! Yes! Then you'll be in even better heart when I give you an interesting piece of news. On Thursday of this week, this country will re-elect the Conservative government. After so much talk of the need for a positive message, he listed what he called ten Tory truths, ranging from strong defence to trade union reform. But the attack on Mr Kinnock, harsher than ever. Look at proportional representation. He was always against. Now in the latest, most cynical change of all, he lurches towards it, grabbing desperately at a prospect of power. Power before principle. Does he think the public can't see what he's up to? And just as personalised, the very direct appeal for a mandate for a major premiership. I have only just begun the task that I've set myself. On Thursday, I asked this nation to look at my record of service and my ideals for the future. To place their trust in me and in this party that has served them so well and faithfully. I set no bounds to my ambition for this country or its people. At least among the party faithful here, it had the desired effect. The Conservatives say they draw some comfort from the polls. They say they show that their attacks on Neil Kinnock have stopped the Labour surge. But the polls also suggest that they fail to give a clear answer to those voters asking why they should vote for John Major, not just against Neil Kinnock. This speech was an attempt to put that right. Edward Sturton, News at 10, with the Conservative campaign. Kinnock arrived in Lancashire tonight with an appeal for all voters to exercise their democratic rights on Thursday. Remember Eastern Europe, he said, remember South Africa. People there had waited too long for the vote to waste it. Mr Kinnock is still anxious to win more voters to his side, of course, to break the deadlock in polls which still point to a hung parliament. He believes there's still time to do it. We never take anyone for granted, he said today. His message tonight, if the Tories haven't got it right in 13 years, they never will. You've had a plumber, same plumber, 
three times to fix a leak. Every time he's been, he's pottered around a bit, and he's gone away telling you he's fixed it. And there you are still, standing in the kitchen up to your waist in water. Are you going to call the same plumber? That's the question. And once again, he invoked the image of the election as a referendum on the NHS. The National Health Service is now in mortal danger. Its whole future rests upon the decision we take as a nation when we vote in the general election on Thursday. Because at this election, the choice will be made to build up the National Health Service or to break up the National Health Service. Mr. Kinnock is sticking to his prediction of a 20-seat majority, but officials are warning against complacency. They remain skeptical of opinion polls, which suggest a swing of up to 10% for Labour in some key marginals. Tim Newark is a 10 with the Labour campaign. Having dominated so much of the election agenda, Paddy Ashdown's main aim now is to avoid a last-minute squeeze. Tonight he was in Cornwall, where the Liberal Democrats predict they could take all five seats and where the Tories are their main opponents. First, he attacked John Major's attempt to disparage the Liberal Democrat vote. He told you, he told the nation, not to sleepwalk into the polling station. If you remember, he said that the nation should wake up Mr. Major must be the first Prime Minister in British constitutional history to get halfway through his speech and then ask people to wake up. His question to former Tory voters whether they could still accept a system which might give Labour unfettered power. But are you really prepared to see the Labour Party, the Labour Party, enjoy such power on only 38% of the vote in the future? Are you really prepared to do that? And once again, he challenged those, arguing that a vote for the Liberal Democrats would be wasted. Well, my answer to them first is this, that no vote of principle is a wasted vote. No vote of principle can ever be a wasted vote. Whether that turns out to be merely a vain hope or a reality will be the decisive test for the Liberal Democrats and their leader this Thursday. Paddy Ashdown has made much of the scaremongering of the other parties. Tonight, he raised a spectre of his own, that of Labour ruling with the support of less than 40% of the electorate. The implication that a vote for the Liberal Democrats could prevent that. Libby Vina, News at 10, with the Liberal Democrat campaign. Although our Harris 92 survey points to a hung parliament, its findings suggest that most people, 57%, think that would be bad for the country. 29% think it's a good idea. As our political correspondent Joe Andrews reports, it also indicates the breakthrough Labour thought they might have achieved last week has receded. ITN's final poll of this campaign suggests the votes that drop into these sealed ballot boxes on Thursday will result in a hung parliament, with Labour the largest party and the Liberal Democrats probably holding the balance of power. About 33 million votes will be cast, but it's the 4 million or so from the marginal constituencies that will decide this election. Today's figures suggest the House of Commons could look something like this, with Labour on 310, 16 short of an overall majority, the Tories on 302, the Liberal Democrats 15, but these polls usually underestimate their showing, and others at 24. On tonight's poll, this seat, Chester, would probably swing from Conservative to Labour. Despite the appearance of an affluent tourist centre, the move to Labour across this part of northwest England has whittled away the Tory majority. It's the way people here and in the other marginals say they'll cast their votes that's made a hung parliament the likeliest outcome. But our poll suggests that most people don't actually support such a result. 57% of all voters say a hung parliament would be a bad thing, 29% say it's a good thing, and 14% don't know. Those who think it's a bad thing believe it would mean weak government and another election soon. Nobody will be able to cope with anything. It'll, it'll be the case of trading with this one, trading with that one to try and get, get any bills from us. So uh, it's just a waste of time. I think we need somebody who has some kind of sense of decision and direction. I think it would be better for the country if uh, there's a clear overall majority. 
but those who back a hung parliament say it would mean more moderate government and help to get proportional representation. Well, they don't seem to be getting to grips individually, so I think if they all... I think they should have a coalition and see if they can all sort it out. If they work together, they could do some good. Thank you very much. To get together, rather than fight each other. In this campaign, there's been little net movement by the parties. Labour, starting 10 points up on its 87 performance, appears to have slipped slightly. The Tories hit a low last week, but have since revived. And the Liberal Democrats, who went into the campaign below their 87 result, have put on three points. There's been a shift to Labour since 87 among all groups in society, but this poll suggests one of the biggest movements is still among skilled manual workers, the so-called C2s. Since 87, Tory support here has dropped seven points. Labour's is up 11 and the Liberal Democrats down five. The figures suggest one issue that has prompted movement in this group is the poll tax, with many bills arriving on doorsteps this week. And among pensioners, about 20% of voters, there's been a similar shift, with the Conservatives down seven since 87, Labour up 12 and the Liberal Democrats down three. One suggestion is that Labour's pledge to increase pensions may have made some impact. Tonight's poll of polls, an average of the last eight surveys, puts Labour's lead at 3%, still pointing to a hung parliament. But in ITN surveys, 17% of those certain to vote say they still haven't made up their minds. So the politicians have a day's campaigning left to win the undecided. And in this election, a strong finish by any party just might change the result. Joe Andrews, News at 10, at ITN headquarters. Well, perhaps bearing that in mind, today the parties all tried to campaign on what they see as their strengths. Labour on the National Health Service, the Conservatives, the economy, the Liberal Democrats, electoral reform, what they called modernising our democracy. Mr Major said he knew he was going to win, but the strong possibility of no clear winner, a hung parliament, kept intruding. Mr Major is still assuring everyone in public that he's confident of victory. No, it's going to be all right. It's going to surprise people. But the fact that he refers to victory as a surprise and his reaction to a phone call later in the tour if it's Paddy, tell him no. <laughs> is an illustration that his mind, like that of the other leaders, is on a hung parliament. Mr Major treats pacts and PR with equal scorn. His hitmen only pick up the PR theme in order to beat Mr Kinnock around the head with it, here mocking his comments about PR when he appeared with Sue Lawley on television. Done. Are you in favour of proportional representation? I want to know where you personally stand on the subject. Kinnock. Well, I would be delighted to be able to tell you. Lawley, now. At this juncture, well, I'd be delighted to, but what I, uh, what do you mean? Done. It's yes or no, isn't it? Either you agree with it or you don't agree with it. Yes, uh, sure. Well, quite. No, it isn't quite as simple as that. Not sitting where I am sitting. Labour could, with justice, point to the barracking Mr Major got on that television programme. In fact, their early morning strategy meeting had already confirmed the decision to concentrate on health and to prepare a jibe by Robin Cook, aimed at opposite number William Watergrave. I am worried about William. Stop. I'm worried about William. I've not seen him out in public for almost a fortnight. I've read that he did a live interview on Newville Hospital Radio, but he has not been put up against me since the second week of the campaign. Mr. Wardgrave was in fact alive and well and campaigning at a health centre in Southampton. Back at Labour's press conference, a question once again on PR. What did a vote for Labour mean? You're voting to have the absolute assurance that there will be a thorough uh, analysis, review and public debate on an issue which is of interest to the general public and on which they deserve to have the ultimate say. Mr Ashdown, who's been in the West Country, his best bet for Liberal Democrat gains, is aware no one will discuss deals until the election is over. In the meantime, he talks as tough as his opponents, promising to vote against any Queen's speech unless there's a deal on PR. Only a coalition, he says, will give the country stability. All of us have to deal with the mathematics as we find, themselves, as we find them on Friday morning. All of us then have to act in a way which we consider to be in the country's best interest. My judgment is that it's in the country's best interest to have a stable government, which, is a, which commands a majority in the House of Commons, to get through its legislation. At least part of his audience in the West Country is enthusiastic. 
although one of the seals being fed by Mr Ashdown is apparently called Major and it reportedly declined his offer. <laughs>